First Corinthians chapter one. <clears throat> We're familiar with uh, the division there. Uh, verse 12, now I say this, that each one of you says, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, <clears throat> I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. He says, was Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? You know, right there, as we go on, that makes baptism strong. You know, Paul makes a point of implication. You know, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So that shows that baptism is essential. Uh, they knew the answer to that. He didn't have to go over that because they were baptized in the name of Christ. <clears throat> Verse 14. I thank God that I I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I had baptized had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides, that, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. He says, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none, no effect. Let me ask you a question. When Paul says, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Does that discredit baptism? No. Anybody want to, what is he talking about? I mean, you know, he says, for Christ did not send me to baptize. And Christ did send him, right? We know the road to Damascus, so we know he, he was an apostle. An apostle is one sent. Uh, but, he was once sent by Jesus Christ, so he was part of one of the apostles. Uh, Christ was also called an apostle in the book of Hebrews. He was sent by God, the Father. Okay? I think Barnabas, I think if I'm correct, was called an apostle. He was sent by the church. So, uh, but what made these 12 uh, different, they were sent by Christ. Okay? And so they had that authority which was given to them by Jesus Christ. And, uh, so he said, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Anybody want to try it? Say it again, Paul. Bible says, go out and teach all nations first, right? It doesn't say go out and baptize all nations. It says go out and teach all nations, right? A lot of times people want to dip them in the water and then go on their way, but most people don't know. They, they need to be taught the word and then exactly. be baptized under their obedience to the word, not be just dumped in the water. That's, that's his point. Okay. We, Huh? It doesn't. That's why I understand when Jesus said go out, and, go out and teach all nations, that Greek word is make disciples. The disciples one that follows the teachings of Christ. And so you're, you're teaching him first. Uh, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. What, believe in the doctrine, whatever that doctrine is, presents. Jesus Christ, the church, you know, we can go over that and over that. But you're teaching that person first. And then if that person decides to become a Christian, uh, the last, the last step, understand, the last step to salvation, the last step, there are steps to salvation, but the last step is baptism, okay? In Acts 2.38, what, what does the Bible say? Does it say, when, when they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Did Peter said, be baptized? Well, he said, blank and be baptized. He said, repent. That one word, repent, uh, is a strong word. That's the word that allows you, that 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 kind of kind of helps you to go into things when people have to change their lifestyle, the things that they're doing, the situation they're in. Because repentance is not confession; it's just not I, I've sinned. Repent.
repentance is what? You know, in, is in the Greek, it's a deep, 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 deep change of mind. And if I strongly change my mind, I mean, what's the action for that I'm going to change? You understand, it's not just a change of mind. It's a deep change of mind. So if I'm a drunkard and I truly repent, I have, when I have a deep, deep change of mind as a drunkard, I want to live my life correctly, and I'm, I'm serious and want to change, I'm going to do things necessary to help me change my life. You understand? So when he says repent and be baptized, that's, you got to, and, and when he was talking, as we know, when he, when he made that statement, he was talking to Judaizers who was worshiping in the Jewish system, so they had to change them, they, they already had the idea of, you know, he, talk, he was talking to devout religious people. So they had the idea, the concept of being religious. They were religious. But they had to change their mind. They had to repent. They had to walk out of one worship style and go into another worship style. Okay? And so if I'm, if I'm to, if I'm, if I was to go out and just baptize and I'll take this young man, I just, I just say, and people do that. I will sit there and teach him the gospel. And, and, and listen, people do that today. Preachers do that. I will sit here and just teach them the gospel about baptism. For some reason, people don't want to talk about the church, even though we can go over this and, and it's, it's the Bible talks about the church, part of salvation, there's no doubt. If it didn't do it, I wouldn't say you all know that it does. But people just want to avoid the church. So I just sit down and teach them you got to be baptized for the mission of sins. Of course, in a high percentage of people will want to be baptized. Okay? Uh, but we get down to nitty gritty and start teaching what it means to give your life over to Christ, become a disciple. There is one church versus denominationalism. There is there is a way to live. What's your what's your situation? How you're living? Are you married? Are you single? You know, are you homosexual? Are you drunkard? Are you a drug addict? You know, what's your you know what I'm saying? Uh, you get into uh, are you Baptist? Are you Methodist? Are you Catholic? Are you the, well? You know, understand you can't when the Bible says repent, be baptized. The Bible washes away sins, but the, one of the qualifications to, for God to wash away is repentance. How's God going to wash away sin that you haven't really repented of? So really, you, you, you get people. Some people get so excited about throwing people in the water, but they're doing him injustice. Right, and that's what. And like Acts chapter two, when you get into that, Peter's situation. Peter's out there. He's teaching them. You know, they, they, they hear, they see the miracle, and they, they you know, they, Peter starts going to the Old Testament. All Peter does is talks about the Word of God. I mean, he talks about the um, uh, the Christ that they crucified, which was only, what, 50 days ago. Some 40, some 40, 50 days ago, I remember. So it was still fresh on their mind. Okay? And so they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? But what if Peter just said, be baptized? Okay, Peter, ba now understand I, I'm taking it literally. What if Peter just said, be baptized? All he did was taught, taught them that they crucified the Christ when you get into it. He proved the, from the Old Testament, showed them from the Old Testament, he crucified the Christ. What if he just said, okay, be baptized? He baptized them. Where are they going? They don't know. They're going right back to where they came from. That's why. Let's just go there. And we'll, I don't want to, I want to stay here, but let's just go there real quick. Acts 2. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. So they made the statement. Now, when verse thirty-seven. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked. They were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, "Men and brethren, what shall we do?" In other words, we realized we crucified the Christ. We we took part in that. What can we do to be safe from this? We were guilty. Then Peter said to them, verse thirty-eight: "Repent." And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sins that you shall receive to give the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children <laughs> and to all who are far off, as men of the Lord God will call. Now, but notice this. That is the, and you've heard this before, that is the introductory statement. That's all it is. It's, it's, it's introducing what they need to do. That's all it is. Notice how the Bible works. Peter did not stop there. Before, now, let's skip down to uh, verse 41. Someone read verse 41 for me, please. So people would take that and say, well, Peter said to be baptized, and they would 
they would take that and say, you were baptized. See, they would say, well, they were baptized. Peter said, repent, be baptized. They were baptized. So you don't have to hear anything else. You forget all that other stuff. They were baptized. Can anybody tell me what this, what, what this, there's something there that these people skip. They're skipping a verse before baptism. It lets me know that Peter taught the gospel before they were baptized. Confess, but there's something there. You're right. But there's something there, something there I want you to read. The shows me that Peter taught them other things before they were baptized. And then they that glad what? What's your name? Tina. Then they read that again, please. And then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Now, somebody else give me something else. Tina had it, but she didn't go far enough. Huh? To hear, to hear the message. Right, take it in. Tina had it, but she didn't go far enough. And what's your name? Kim, you're right. Tina had it, but she didn't go far enough. Y'all with me? Tina had it, but she didn't go far enough. She didn't go back. I had one. She didn't go back enough. She didn't, she's skipping something. Yeah, she's skipping something. No, yeah, I, no, I said read. Oh, say that again. <laughs> you want to read verse 40? Okay. Now, Tina, read verse 41. Okay. And I'll read verse 42. And they continue steadfastly. Now, so, watch this. Before Peter baptized him, right? The Bible says, and with many other words, he testified and exhorted, saying, Be saved from this first generation. Right? Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. See, there's introductory statements. But before they were baptized, Peter taught them. It's logic. Use logic. Why would, Peter, why would Peter take a bunch of men who, are, for example, I take, I take devout Catholics. I take devout Catholics and I say, you know what, you're crucifying Christ enough. You're crucifying Christ again because the Pope is not the mediator. That's all I, that's all I teach them. That's all I teach them. I don't teach them. That's all, understand what I'm saying. That's all I teach them. That's it. And they realize, you know what, the Pope is not the mediator. What can we do to be saved? And I say, be baptized. And I baptize them. Where are they going? Where are, they going? Where are they going? Come on, they're going back to what? Catholicism. I haven't taught them anything. All I want to do is get them in the water. Get them in the water. Get them in the water. And so that's what Paul, I don't want to go over a tangent, but we have to go somewhere else now before I go. Let's just go, and then I'll go back to Corinthians. I'm sorry, but this is, this is a, let's go to Acts 16. Okay, someone read, read verse 33. <clears throat> Acts 16, verse 33. Okay. So they were baptized, right? Right? Now, verse 29. Then he called for a light, ran and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Anybody know what's going on here? We, we know. Who knows what's going on here? Right. So he's a jailer. Paul and Silas are locked up in a dungeon. Paul, if you were, if you were a jailer, would you, know, would you know why you're in? Would you know the people who, who you would know about the people who, who are locked up? If I'm locked up, you want to know why is Curtis locked up, right? And so I'm sure he knew why, plus they caused an uproar. So he knew why they were locked up. So you have to take all that consideration. So based on what happened, and we know about that they were loose from the, all that he wanted to be saved, he realized that these guys are legit. What can I do to be saved? Okay? And so 
So uh, what they say in verse 21, so they said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Stay there. That's all. That's what people take you. That's all they said. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. And they would say, see, when he asked, they would say, listen, Church of Christ preacher. When he asked, that's how they do. When he asked to, what can I do to be saved? They'll say, look at a Church of Christ preacher. Look at, you know, they get all into it. Look at it. Um, they say, uh, he said, believe on Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Not only him, you and your household. So what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, and, and, and some people are like, you know, he's got, he's got an excellent point. That guy is really, I need to go to seminary. He's really sharp. I mean, they, <laughs> because they're really into it. You know, boom, boom, and, you know. But there's a concept. There's an idea, is, is, you have to use logic. We're still in the introductory statement. Right? Now, Reverse, someone read verse 32. Now, Tina, read verse 32 and verse 33. Okay, so the introductory statement is what can I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You're in your household. That's the introductory state. That's just the introduction. He got his attention. Understand the, understand the jailer could have been killed. If prisoners escaped back in the first century, the jailer could be killed, right? He's excited because, you know, you know, their bands are loose and they're still here. I mean, his life was over. And so, you know, he's like, you know, what can, what can I do to be saved? You think about his life. He's about to be killed. Put yourself in this position there. You know, you're in jail in the first century, and the rule is that if the prison escape, your life will be taken. And, you know, you wake up and, you know, where is everybody? You're thinking, my life is over. I'm, I'm not going to see my kids. And it's true. That's, he, they, you would be killed. And so when he looked and saw that everybody was there, can you imagine how he felt? I mean, this, you know, he was like, in other words, I know why you're here. I got you locked up. <laughs> what can I do to be saved? Why did he say that? Because he was familiar Understand, Paul and Silas were singing praises to God. They, the doctrine was going out. You know, they, he heard things. He's like, what can I do to be saved? But he didn't hear it all. Okay? And so that's the introductory statement. So he was made a disciple. He was shown, he was shown and it's, understand something. It's okay, people, people have to understand. <clears throat> it's okay. There's nothing wrong. I believe, there's nothing wrong with me sitting down and, 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 and teaching, teaching him for a long period of time, or, he, or, he, or say he's teaching me. There's nothing wrong with time. There's nothing wrong with studying for hours and hours and then come back the next day. There's nothing wrong with that. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with somebody come up here and say, I want to become a Christian, and all of a sudden we, we want to back. There's nothing wrong with telling that person, well, let's study first. There's nothing wrong with that. Because a lot of times... What you're doing, you're sitting down and you're, and you're studying with this person. You're making sure this person knows because God has requirements. Sometimes we act like there's something wrong. It's like when I, when I was at a congregation one time and, and people come to be baptized and I show the congregation. We, we have to study with these people first. And there was a woman that she thought, that, that's just, what if they die? What if, and then after we study, she was like, you know what? That's right. I, I never knew that. Because they felt like the, if someone wants to come and be saved, let's get them saved right away. That's fine. I believe, I believe that 100%. But the Bible, we need to teach them because we want to make sure he's saved. What's wrong with saying, what's wrong with someone come here that you don't know and saying, and you know, like after a sermon, preachers say, hear, believe, repent, be baptized. A lot of times we don't preach on salvation, we just say that. And someone says, you know, I want to be baptized. You don't know the person. And so you just take them in the water, you baptize them. Well, that's really funny, but that person could be a homosexual. He could be married to another man or she could be married to another woman. And so what have you done? You, you think... Boy, we, you, you announced that we baptized someone. and You understand what I'm saying? And everybody's happy. And, and, and God hasn't washed, the guy's going away thinking he's saved, and God hasn't washed away his sins. Because that's, that's a self-gratification. We want to be satisfied. Let's get him in the water. And so now let's put out we baptize someone. You know what? Paul did not, when people taught the gospel in the first century, 
there are many who did not become Christians. When I teach you the gospel, or you teach me the gospel, that's all God requires me to do. If I teach you the gospel and you don't become a Christian, that's not my fault. I've done my job. You understand what I'm saying? Just because he doesn't become a Christian, I've done my job. See, Paul went out to teach the gospel, not to baptize. You see? And, and that's his point. And so, understand this. this I, 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 and I, I question that sometimes when people just do that. They just, what is, why do we avoid teaching people the gospel? Why just baptism? I, I, I wonder about people who say, I've heard, we have discussions, we had discussions in the past of people, well, you know, they don't have to know, every, they don't have to know about the church. What are you talking about? Acts 8, chapter 5. Acts 8, chapter 5. Acts 8, chapter 5. Acts 8, verse 5 and verse 12. Read those things together, somebody, please. And that, we'll just stop there. We'll, there's a lot of, while we turn there, read Acts. They were, Paul was in the prison. He, was, he preached the kingdom. They were preaching the kingdom. They were preaching the church. They were pre- I mean, he purchased the church with his blood. There's an avenue of worship. There's a way we worship God. There's a way we don't worship God. God has set standards for his worship. If a person is, if a person is worshiping God incorrectly, then, and, and, and the Bible says repent and be baptized, let's keep it simple. Say he's in the denomination of worship. He's worshiping God incorrectly. It's not according to the Bible. And then he's sitting there. He wants to become a Christian, and you avoid teaching him the church. How's he going to repent? What does Acts 8, 5 say? He went, down, he went down to the city and preached who to them? Okay, we're going to skip everything else because it all goes together because Philip did miracles. He had that ability and et cetera, et cetera. I was back in the first century by laying on hands. And so, so, Tina, he preached Christ unto them, right? Now, read verse 12. Watch this. This is what he preached. Yes. Concerning what? Is that the church? Yes. Okay. So, so before they were baptized, he came, the Bible says he preached Christ unto them. That's all it says. He went to Samaria. And, and understand, when you get into the history of it, you just don't go to Samaria preaching Christ unto them. I mean, that's Samaria and the Jews, they just didn't get along. I mean, that's just, you know. So he was, he was, he was, doing, some, he was doing some work. That's a no-no, but he went. He's preaching Christ unto them. That's all it says. Okay? We find out in verse 12 what preaching Christ is. That's his kingdom. Preaching Christ is his law. You understand? And so when they, but they heard all this before they were baptized. And so when I tie, when I tie, when I tie all it, when I tie all this in together, when Peter said, repent, be, repent, be baptized, Peter preached on the kingdom. The Bible says in Mark chapter 9 and verse 1, the kingdom will come with power. The kingdom was here when, when Peter, when Peter and the apostles preached, the, the, uh, the kingdom had arrived. They knew it from, from the, from the uh, speaking in tongues. They, it came with power. He, they were excited about, why would you not preach the church, the kingdom? During that time, I mean, how do you, what I'm saying to you, a lot of, listen to this. Some people say Thomas Warren was, he, said he was a lunatic in logic. They said some people, but Thomas Warren uh, knew logic and he was right. And he, we, we, you know, one day I picked him up and took him to a deal and uh, he, was, he was telling me that. We talked and he was, you know, and he was well versed. He was well rounded. <laughs> But people would not use, he, he, he understood logic and, and, and this and that. He was right about it. I mean, for, it's not even logical for, for someone to just, well, with, I mean, some things that people, te- people teach aren't even logical. I like just get baptized. That's not, for, not even logical without anything else. Think about that. I mean, don't, don't mention the church. Logically, How's a person going to repent if I don't mention the church? You know, you know what I mean? There are, understand, understand what I said in the beginning. Repentance opens it up. Repentance opens it up. 
Now, if a person is not involved in denominationalism, they want to know what it means to become a Christian, then we don't have to spend that much time on certain areas. You understand what I'm saying? You know, certain areas, we don't have to spend that much time. We, we talk about it. This is, what, this is what we're going to do. This is Christ's church, and when you're baptized, you want to be part of the church. You, know, you have to live your life, and he's baptized, and he's added to the church. A person is, is in denomination, fully dedicated to denominationalism. We have to study. We have to study. You see what I'm saying? A person is a Muslim. We have to study. Okay? A person is a drunkard. We're going to, he, he might have a problem with religion. You know, you dealt with people who, who didn't, you know, they believe in the church. Uh, they believe in the church of Christ. They believe what's, what's been taught, but they just can't become Christian because they, they love to drink. So you have to deal with that. You see what I'm saying? Now, I don't, I, I'm going, I, I, want, I didn't mean to go this far, but if a, per, now here's what I'm, now don't, if a person is a drunkard uh, and he says, you know what, I want to give my life over to Christ. I'm not drinking anymore. I want to do those things that uh, I can't. I can't misjudge his heart. I'm gonna baptize him. If we study, he says. If he's he, he, or she, he or she says, I can't say. Well, you you know, I think you're gonna drink tomorrow. I think you're gonna drink. That's not my call. If he or she says, you know what, I'm 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 through with drinking. You know, I hear the word of God. I want to live like I want to live like this. I'm tired of it. You know, I want to become a Christian. I'm through with it. Father, I'm sorry. And blah blah blah. You see, then he's baptized, and then we do those things necessary to help him stop drinking. You understand? Like when I used to be in the prison ministry, I used to, I used to hear this, and I, used to, I couldn't stand. I used to almost hate this when people say, "Well, it just." People would literally say, "Well, when, they, when things are going well in the prison, people come to Christ." They say, "Well, they're just doing that because they're locked up." That's not my call. Matter of fact. Because you're locked up, I'm glad. That's that's a good reason. If that influence should become be, to be added to the church, that's a good reason. When people say that, I think it's and I mean ignorance, and, ignorance, and, and, and this not a disrespectful way. They not know. They don't know. Well, they're just doing it because they. Well, that's well. If that's the case, fine. If, if prison makes a person come to come to Bible class, makes a person worship, makes a person want to have Bible study because he's scared of his life, he wants to study the Word of God. That's a great thing. He wants to become a Christian in case he dies, doesn't make it out of there. He wants to make sure he goes to heaven. He wants to make sure he's doing it right. What's wrong with that? Yeah, he's, he did it because he's locked up. But that's a good thing, you see. But I can't, you know, I can't say, well, I can't. I'm not going to turn you down. If you lie to me, if a person lies to me and say, well, my situation, I, I'm, living, I'm living right. This is what, what they're saying. Okay, I'm going to take what he says. What I'm saying, I'm not going to be a police. I'm not going to scrutinize and investigate Paul down to the T to make sure that, you know, make sure he's doing it. I'm not, I'm not, that, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to teach you, ask you questions, and I'm going to take what you say. As far as I can go. You understand? So, Paul did not go to baptize. Paul went to preach and teach the gospel. Now, I know somebody somebody got to tell me when, because, you know, we can keep going and going and going. I don't know when to cut off. 15 minutes? Okay. All right. So that's, that's basically, uh, remember that when you uh, teaching the gospel, uh, Paul, they were teaching the gospel. They wasn't going out. They weren't going out baptizing people. And you see that a lot. You clash with people who will go out. Uh, when we were in South America one time, and this was years ago, I remember it was, a, it was an issue there because there was a congregation from Oklahoma who just was upset because they just wanted to baptize everybody. And they were baptized. And we, we, stopped, we, just, we had a meeting with them. You know, it, and they were, they were, he went to, this guy, I mean, he went to Galatians and Romans, and he totally, he totally took Galatians and Romans out of context. Totally. And I was trying to be as nice as I can. And he got offended. I, was, I said, man, you take it on. Let's study this out. But he didn't really want to hear it because all he wanted to do is, well, if they, you know, we leave, they're not baptized, they, they won't be saved. And, well, that, that, you know, it's like, do you realize what you're doing? You're putting people in the water. Do you know what I mean? And then they go home back to the United States and we baptize 100 people. Everybody thought they did a great job. When we leave this country and we talk, we don't even get into, you know, like say if Sean goes to Jamaica and, he'll, and we'll, He'll come. I said, how'd it go? He'll say, well, we had some restorations, and you might say we baptized one, or how many did you teach? That's what he's there for. 
And that, if he went there to teach, if they went there to teach, that's a great thing. Of course, it's great. Hopefully, somebody becomes a Christian. But it doesn't mean a person didn't do anything because nobody got baptized. See what I'm saying? God wants them to hear. You mentioned the word hear. That's, he wants them to hear. Like when Jonah went to Nineveh, he didn't want to go. But God wanted them to hear. You understand? Uh, even though people in the first century in the Old Testament wouldn't repent, God wanted them to. He knew Jeremiah. He would tell the prophets, this was going to happen. They're going to be like this toward you. But God wanted them to hear. In other words, I'm, you heard it. He already knew if they were going to be stubborn. He knew Pharaoh. He, he, he knew Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh was going to have a heart. He's going to harden his heart. I'm going to harden What he mean when he said, I'm going to harden his heart? He, and then he said, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. What he meant by that is that, Moses, when you and Aaron go present this to Pharaoh, that word of God that I give you is going to harden his heart. His Pharaoh's heart was already hard. But God still wanted him to hear. And so when I do my job and allow you to hear, I've done my job. That's why some people walk away and say, well, I've seen that. Well, we didn't baptize anyone, man. We got to try next year. What are you talking about? Did you teach them? That's what God requires. If, if, you, if you're married or, or you're with someone and, and you're, you're, you're married to a non-Christian or or whatever, and uh, your wife, the wife is, or vice versa, and, you, and your, your husband or your wife doesn't become a Christian, okay? That's not your fault. But God wants them to hear. Now, what's your fault when, you, when you're just a total, you know, like Paul tells wives how to conduct themselves when they're married to a non-Christian man, you know what I'm saying? They just, the wife, don't, she behaves like a non-Christian. Then, then you may have fault in that. But when you have, when you have respect and, and you're a Christian woman and trying to teach your husband the right way and you be an example, he doesn't adhere to the gospel, you've done your job. You understand that? Right. You, uh, right. But they're hearing you and they're hearing, they're hearing through your actions that this is what you have to do. Just because they're not saved, that doesn't mean you haven't done Let's go back to Corinthians. We'll look at that. Let's go back to Corinthians. We'll look at that. First Corinthians. <laughs> Uh, let's go to chapter 3. We got 10 minutes, Paul? 5 minutes? 10 minutes? So we, 10 after 11, is that how it works? 5 after 11. One bell? 15 after 11? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, look at... Uh, Let's skip this. Look at verse 9. <laughs> For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. And another builds on it. So Paul laid the foundation. Notice he says according to the grace of God. Paul knew that the reason why he was a Christian, the reason why he was still living, the things that he'd done was by the grace of God. Okay, but Paul obeyed Christ to get him to that grace. Uh, verse 11. For no foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. So Christ laid that foundation. Uh, uh, Paul laid the foundation with the gospel with, that came from Christ Jesus. If you understand buildings, he's using building terminology. How important is the foundation to the building? Anybody? Any builders in here know anything about buildings? Okay, Paul says it's very important. I know that. Mess with Paul. What, what, what's so important about it? I know that. What's so important about it? <laughs> you got to do it right. All right. Um, strong, strong foundation. Building real represent the foundation. Well, y'all know I got to pick on Paul because every time I come here, Paul's always, you know, notice what he said when he got up, instead of just saying, he came and got me, I was reading, he told y'all I was asleep. So, you know, I always got, he's always, he's always doing something, he's always doing something. <laughs> uh, so, the foundation, the foundation has to be done according to the plans, right? Right? When I go in and build, when I, when I go in and build, we do, you know, I'm looking at the, the drawings and plans, the city has to approve them, the foundation has to be, you know, these. You're building up from that foundation, right? And so Christ is the foundation. So Paul takes the word of God and he starts, he goes building. Uh, 
Verse 12. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation, which is gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Verse 13. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. Hmm. And so basically when you just let's take this building a congregation. In other words, build the congregation according to the plan. If you don't build it according to plan, uh, what well, other words, the winds are going to come. The winds are going to come, and those winds will determine how you built it. The foundation is important, right? You don't build it right. The winds are going to come. That's why there's rules and regulations to found building a house, and that's why the city has codes and standards. Okay? Uh, you, even your, your joists, your pearl and all that, when you're building your rafters, you want those to be corrected. I think the pearl goes, goes across here and all that. Like one time we had a guy, uh, uh, the framer, and he, 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 did his, he did a great job. And then I didn't recognize it when, uh, I think it's called perlin, if I remember. But the specter came in and said, there's no perlin, perlin, if I'm saying that right. I thought, oh, I didn't see that. And I called it back. He had to put it on. What it was is that, if I'm correct, it was a while ago, is that there was two, it was two by eights that were going all the way across. They were added on. They were crossing. And the way they way it had it, and I started looking. I said, okay, what is it? Well, that kept it, that kept the foundation, you know, the the the, uh, the, uh, the joists and the roof, the uh, rafters, they weren't allowed to sh move around in the wind, you know, when it's windy. It kept them strong, something like that. And they had the deals going up like that. And I was like, wow. See what I'm saying? But... When he, the city made him do it according to the plan, it made that foundation, it made that, that roof area strong. It would have lasted for a while, but when the strong wind hit, it, wouldn't la it would have it would have disrupted everything. Okay? And so that's why you do it on, that's what he's saying. He says, watch how you build because, in other words, the day will declare it. Watch how you build the congregations because the day, in other words, Satan's going to come in and try to tempt. There's going to be, there's going to be a, a time of temptation. Uh, the, the seed and the sowing of the seed. You know, you plant the seed, you teach someone the gospel. Some, some people are added to church. They leave. Some people hang in there. That, that doesn't mean I did something bad because someone quits, decides to go back where they came from. See what I'm saying? And so, and he says, it will be, verse 13, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. And fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. Now, don't take just he's using, you know, building building terminology, and you got to take it in, in the Christian attitude. Uh, there's going to be times when watch how you build because there's going to be storms, religious storms that hit the congregation, and and uh, it's going to test to see how you built it, okay, and how you dealt with these people. Did you teach them correctly? Or have you stayed with them? Have you focused with them? How, are you helping them grow? Verse 14. If anyone's work with here's what I'm, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, so I'm going to read verse fourteen. Keep going. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Okay. I, I, I believe the fire does make is, is, is eternal damnation. Okay? But, if any, let's go back to verse 14. If anyone's work he has built, if anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. Okay? Uh, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Anybody want to try that? All right. We don't have time, but you go to Thessalonians, go to Galatians, Philippians. Paul wrote the book of Philippians. Now, stay with me because I'm dealing with this. Paul wrote the book of Philippians. He was so satisfied with them. It was reward to them, to him. The congregation that he helped establish was being strong and doing this and that. He wrote to Galatians. He was strict. He went right to the point. He said, basically, you're going to lose your soul. Okay? Uh, Paul was so involved with these people. In Thessalonians, he, he was treated, he, he treated the Thessalonians like, like a mother does her children. He was very affectionate with them. He loved the church. He loved the congregations. When the congregation fell, listen to me, it hurt him. Understand, he was into, 
we, a lot of us are not into it like he was. This man was killed because of the church. He was persecuted and whipped because he was into it. When the congregation fell, the congregation he has some, it hurt him. He suffered loss. When the congregation hung in there, it was it was reward to him. Understand, the man was in prison all those years because of preaching the gospel. He was 100% into what he was doing. He left all the riches of Judaism that he had. Paul had a position. He had things. He, he left all that to nothing. He suffered many stripes. He was homeless. He was cold. He tells Timothy in prison, when you come to see me, bring my coat. Why? He's cold. But in a lot of cases, all he had to do was denounce Christ, and he wouldn't do it. So I want you, I'm saying that because somebody like that would suffer loss. It's like put yourself, a lot of you have children, you love your children. I don't care. I, you know, I, there's a lot of things I like my children to be. But if my children were lost, if they died and lost their soul, it, it would destroy me. I would have to be strong, chemo. It would hurt me. Because I understand the concept of heaven and hell. I picture my daughter, my son, calling daddy in, 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 in Hades and in, in the bad part and going to hell for a turn, and I can't do anything. That would, you know, if you know the Bible, that, that's, that hurts your mind. And so I would suffer loss if I taught my son the gospel and he decided to. To, to, to deliver, I was, you know, he's lost. I would suffer loss emotionally, but me, myself, I'd still be saved. But, and then my daughter, I teach her all the time. She's, she's dedicated to the Lord. As she dies, she goes straight to heaven. It's a reward to me. So, understand, he said, but I, he said, but you will be saved. So it's not, so just because a person doesn't, adhere to Christ or a person I taught doesn't stay faithful to Christ and they lose their soul, that's not my fault. See, I still understand the Apostle Paul did his job, didn't he? He went there and taught, taught those congregations. They, they laid the foundation and uh, people fell because that's all he was required to do is, is, is teach the gospel. And the fact that someone goes astray doesn't mean mostly if I love them the way I should, it's going to hurt me, but I still can be saved. You see? And so our job is to teach the gospel. <clears throat> Stand strong. Any questions? Any comments? I think it's time to quit. Anything? Okay, I appreciate it. And um, have any questions at the Bible class, just you know, let me know and we'll go from there. But thanks again.